Hi friends and welcome to Floss Tube Wannabe 6, I believe we're at. So I'm so happy you're joining me. Thanks for watching. Lots of new subscribers um, since the last video, so that's super exciting because we get to share all of our uh, cross stitch and quilting and crafting goodness with lots more people. So that's very exciting. I hope you had a fantastic day. Um, I have just gotten home from work and through all of the stuff that I have made um, that I still have, um, here on my desk and we're gonna just jump right in so I want to show you all of the goodies I had to finish a cross stitch finish and if you've been watching my videos you've seen that I've been working so diligently on this look at my finish it says may our lives be full of thanks and giving isn't this darling look at that I love it. So on this one, I used a 14 count black because this was the first time I had worked anything on black. Look at my little happy pumpkin. It's so cute. Um, so black was a little challenging for me. Um, I hadn't worked with it before, like I said, and so I wanted to make sure my squares were nice and big so I could get it in there. I am graduating uh, into some higher level, uh, little more intricate details um, with the uh, types of fabric that I'm choosing, but um, I did not use the called for colors in this pattern. This is by, this is called an Autumn Wish, and it's by Cherry Hill Stitchery. I know that Cherry Hill Stitchery sells their PDF patterns through Fat Quarter Shop, but um, I happen to get this from an Etsy seller because I like to support local businesses when I can. So there's that for you. What do you guys think? I've been posting some updated pictures um, along the way through Instagram and I'm just really thrilled with myself that I actually started and finished it in the same year. That's a, that's a win for Kayla. So um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, my hashtag is just keep sewing mama that's m-a-m-a -A. and then you can see how this little guy grew this was such a fun one to make my favorite part is kind of how this stuff echoes up here the scroll work and then um, because the pumpkin i chose to do in white uh, then i was able to do these pops of color in these little flowers so what do you guys think of it i love it don't worry i ran out of that mauve thread that's dmc 315 that i used for the lettering so all I did was choose to accentuate the giving um, now one of my YouTube subscribers said that my video is backwards um, so I'm still working on fixing that um, and by working on it I mean it's in the back of my mind and I'm gonna get to it but I wanted to start off by showing you my finish. So I hope you guys liked that. Um, and I hope you're getting lots of time to do some merry stitching. If um, you haven't subscribed to me, would you please do so? Uh, click the subscribe button, you guys know the routine. Um, and then what, what I do here really is just a smorgasbord of my life, my crafting. Um, I'm a quilter at heart. My name is Kayla, mom of seven. Yes, seven. Um, so you're welcome to join me. Everybody is welcome here, no matter what your skill level is. I really want you to be encouraged. Um, when you sit down, you can be stitching with me or you can have a drink and just watch. You may say, Kayla, that's a very full glass of wine. Yes, yes it is. My husband spoiled me. I sent him <clears throat> to the store today while I was at work because I said, listen, my daughter's birthday's tomorrow and I'm feeling really not prepared with it. Might have something to do with the fact that I'm uh, busy all the time. Um, and so I said, I need you to get candles and I need you to do this. And, and then so he calls me at work and he says, I have the candles. I was like, great. You got the one and the two, right? Because she's going to be 12. <laughs> we just had to confirm right child, right age, uh, right numbers and then right color because she's the only girl out of the seven and so I was like you didn't get them in blue right <laughs> so we were going through that it was it was fun and he says by the way I got you a bottle of wine this is why I've been married to this man for 19 years he's so good so cheers to that <clears throat> I can't believe my daughter's going to be 12 but I'm sure we've all said that um, somewhere along the line my oldest is 18 going on 10 so 
<laughs> so there's that. And then the littlest one in the family, his name is Benjamin, and he is going to be turning six next month. So um, I am feeling a little bit more prepared now that I was able to um, pick up some of the supplies after work and then sent my husband during work to get some of those things. So, which is good. Uh, in my spare time, and I use that term very loosely, I am usually crafting. So I fly through the dishwasher, fly through the laundry, fly through the shower, fly through everything. And then I work on projects that I'm commissioned for. Um, one of which projects are, let me see if I can unbury it from my stash here are some stockings. So um, the quilt store that I work at on the weekends um, is called Qu Shiplap Quilt Shop and they also have a coffee shop in a different town and so one of the employees that works at the coffee shop in the other town um, is not a quilter and, and that's okay we love her anyway and um, she said would you be able to do some stockings for me? So she wanted some patchwork stockings so she commissioned me for this project and I'm happy to do it um, and she kind of had hodgepodge some of the pictures that I had posted on Instagram of things that I had already done. For instance, the cutter quilt stockings. Y'all have got to check those out. That's just, it's just, it makes me so happy because some sweet lady somewhere 50, 60, 70 years ago had made this giant queen size quilt and I turned them into cutter stockings so that it could live on. So that's awesome. It was a Dresden and so she had this idea now, um, when quilters go to pick, non-quilters go to pick out fabric, they just pick out things that make them happy. And so I am doing a pat, three patchwork stockings for her. And this is what they look like. Look at how busy this is. This is a very busy pattern. This is a Sue Daly English paper piecing pattern. And so you can see that I have stitched, um, or maybe you can't see, um, that I have stitched all these little things on. So first it goes together on paper, then you sew the paper pieces together that have been wrapped in fabric, then you pull all the paper out. That's obviously the worst part. And then um, stitch it or needle turn applique, which is what I did here to make these stockings. So I have a couple of these. And then her daughter um, wanted something a little bit different. Let me see if I can grab hers. So her daughter just wanted something a little bit like this. And so they have picked out the fabrics. These are Riley Blake fabrics from Riley uh, Blake Design Company. And they're really good sized stockings. So I'm looking forward to finishing that, hopefully um, middle of next week so I can get them to them. Um, just in case they're anything like me and decorate for Thanksgiving super early. It's okay. This is a judgment free zone. So I can tell you a lot of times in many, many years, my Christmas decorations have been up by Veterans Day, which is um, really saying something because I have a veteran in the house, so I should really be celebrating his day instead of being like, let's put up the tree. Um, but, you know, I'm a maker and a quilter and a crafter and all sorts of other things. Um, so I like to have my decorations up. I want to look at them, specifically like our little cross stitches that we only get to look at once a year, right? I've been plowing through some crafts this year. <clears throat> let me show you this one. So I've been working, this is a smaller stocking. Let me show you in comparison to um, my commissioned project. And I chose to do it without any Christmas fabrics. I just wanted to hodgepodge this guy together. These mice are so darling though. Don't they look happy? And little strawberries and mushrooms. Um, so this is oops number one. If you've seen my channel or any of my videos before, um, we usually have a very good laugh on something that I have unintentionally uh, done. And then uh, while I don't post my unintentionals on Instagram, I do share them here with you on YouTube. I really want uh, people to feel like they can make mistakes, they can continue on, that when they mess something up, if if they don't feel like fixing it, that's okay. Um, and I think sometimes in the creative world, us hobbyists and sewists can give the impression that, you know, things do should be as perfect as we can make them, right? And sometimes that's just not achievable or attainable, especially if we're learning how to do something brand new. So this was one of my oopses. That's why it doesn't have a hanger on it. I am going to keep him, but I decided that when I went to a local quilt store, um, I was going to purchase some fusible batting. And so I did that. It made my quilting process 
a whole lot easier because when you use fusible batting, um, your fabric is glued to the batting. And so when you do the quilting on it, even if you don't have a walking foot, it works really well because you don't get the pilling and the pocketing of the quilt. Um, usually you do not because it's all been glued down. So it's like super, super flat. It's like one of the best ways to baste if you're doing a smaller project. But unlike when you're working with something like um, heat and bond or some type of adhesive like that, on heat and bond, you can see there's ripples of glue on one side and the other side's really smooth. When you're working with fusible batting, one side is not very smooth and the other side isn't very smooth. And so you really have to be careful as to which side you choose to um, glue so that one, you don't glue it to the ironing board or two, you don't glue it closed. So Kayla made a mistake here on this guy and this side is perfect. This side has the glue on the outside. And so can't sell this one, uh, can't really wash this one because it can't get heated. Um, and I couldn't press it when it was finished or I would have sewed the whole dadgum thing closed. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little hanger on him and I'm still going to sign my name on the back with my Micron archival ink pen. Message me if you have any questions about that. But yeah, so that was mistake number one. So I'll show you my second mistake, which is really stinking funny in just a little bit. But I got to get through this pile. So let's keep rocking and rolling. So my husband made some quilt ladders for the quilt shop. If you don't have a quilt ladder in your house, I encourage you, go get yourself one. It doesn't have to be expensive. Some of them can be, you know, 20, 30 bucks. You can find them at a thrift store. You could find things that you could repurpose in your house that would be a quilt ladder. But really, it's just this wonderful wooden apparatus usually that we can hang our quilts over and that way we get to display six seven eight of them at a time i've even taken quilt ladders where i filled all the rungs and they're taller than i am which isn't very tall because i'm only five two but that's neither here nor there and then i will take like a stretchy cord and i will attach two more quilts on the top rung. So if you can envision that with me, it's really stinking pretty. Um, so I encourage you to get one of those. But when he was done making the two ladders, we noticed that he had these leftover pieces of wood. And so I wanted to turn them into something and then I wanted to show you. So take a look at this. This little gift tag I made on my Cricut. And then this is just um, some seed berry twine that I got, I believe, from Hobby Lobby. And then this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ribbon right here. It has all this beadwork on it. Look at that. I bought this probably 10 plus years ago at Sam's Club. And so it just, it sang to me because it looks antiquated. It's pretty. It really has a lot of beadwork, even though it wasn't done, you know, by hand, it was manufactured. And so I had put it on this to make this little Merry Christmas tree um, ordeal. And it doesn't bother me that the ends aren't painted or that it's not going to sit evenly on a shelf because of this beadwork on the bottom. I did take the second stack and wrap it in some different ribbon and do, you know, a big huge southern like bow and put that on there and then that one went to the quilt store that's going to be available for sale over at shiblap quilts so i hope you guys like this this was super fun to make and extremely easy it's amazing what we can do with a hot glue gun moving on this part of that cutter quilt uh that was left over I turned into a little tiny super simple stocking but look at this sweet woman who made that cutter quilt which it wasn't a cutter quilt it was a Dresden plate quilt and she had blanket stitched it and hand quilted it and it was made in like pinks and blues greens lights purples you know just really colors of the time um, and so in between my stocking cutouts because I did the great big huge stockings were like these little untouched pieces and so you can see it is absolutely paper thin almost the batting is in there somewhere but you really can't feel it but I really just wanted to save this so I encourage you guys if you have a piece of 
I don't know, pillowcase maybe that, you know, grandma used to use or or a towel or something that really means something to you. You wiped your kids' faces with it for um, many, many years. You can always turn it into something else. Simple. This is an antique button that I used that I just found at an antique store that I had in my stash and some ribbon that I had in my stash. One of the things that I like to do when I'm making ornaments, I just dropped it. That's how I treat things around here is to make sure that the ribbon, when I'm trying to do a tie like this, is printed on both sides. So that's just a little tidbit for me when you're looking at buying um, new ribbons or something catches your eye. If it's printed on both sides, you're really able to do a lot more with it. <clears throat> so that's my little cutter quilt, and it's my little piece of this lady's quilt that I tried to rescue but was unsuccessful. I know you're surprised. And now I get to hang it on my tree. It's the only one I have. So it's wonderful. Here's another little, I've been on this ornament kick. Y'all know this already. <clears throat> Here's another little ornament I made. This is some Riley Brake fabric. And I used that same ribbon and just did this little cute thing. I just love quilted fabric. That just makes me happy. So this does have batting on the inside of it. I used Warm and Natural on this. And then it has this cute little beaded ribbon on it. It's glorious. Little gingham fabric that I just cut and ripped so I had that frayed look. This is going to be really cute tucked away in the tree. I hope you guys love this. Okay, also working on, um, since I had my Cricut out, <clears throat> my husband always harasses me because I am a quilter at heart. So I do crochet and I do paint and I do other things that I'm not very good at, but that's okay. I'm a quilter at heart. And so a lot of times that will take up, up my energy and it'll take up my time and it's what I'm passionate about. Time out for a wine sip here. <clears throat> and then he harasses me that he bought me this Cricut that was umpteen hundreds of dollars and I never use it. So once in a while when I'm feeling really spiteful, I'll just turn it on and I'll get to working. So what I did is I cut out and I dropped something. Oh, that's these little ball things. I probably won't use them. I cut out a bunch of these little banner pieces on my Cricut, and this is just some cardstock paper. And then I took some plain cardstock paper, and it's gonna spell Merry Christmas, which is gonna be really fun. And I'm gonna string it. The Cricut pre-hole punches and cuts everything out, so really does make my job very, very easy. If you can guess, half the trouble in my house is that I lose the pieces for stuff while it's waiting for me to finish it. So part of the design were these little ornament-like balls, or maybe they're supposed to be cranberries or something, holly berries. Um, I probably won't use them just because um, I don't like them, and that's okay. But I'm going to show you this, hopefully, when I do a Christmas open house or post some pictures on Instagram. I cannot wait to start decorating for Christmas. That's like all that's on my mind right now. But I gotta get through my daughter's birthday first. So another Christmas ornament that I was working on were just these little felt birds. So I got my Cricut out and I cut on my Cricut. It was a felt bird ornament. So this is kind of the idea of what it looked like. Isn't that pretty? And then I transferred it and traced it onto felt and then I just cut it out I did a little stitching. It's not very pretty, right? But I'm going to stuff this bird. I'm going to reverse him. I'm going to stuff him. I'm going to put a hanger on it, and he's also going to go on the tree. If you wanted to do needle turn applique, you could trace that shape either directly onto the fabric or onto some tracing paper, uh, foundation paper for paper piecing would also work. <clears throat> and so I just keep this little template handy. So I'm going to stuff this bird with the felt like I saw on um, the Cricut project ideas. But then I also wanted to play with what it looked like with a bunch of different fabrics or d different um, papers. And then I just took it to the sewing machine and I just stitched that in. This is another oops because this little buddy's wing is backwards. His wing's supposed to be pointing to his caboose. <laughs> And it does not. So this is another oops. It's going on my tree. I probably will sign it and put the year on it on the back. And that's okay. Because this is all a learning process, right? We're creators. 
we're makers. We're this big family of um, just really creative people who like to work with our hands, and I love that about us. And what we, um, what I hope we remember is that sometimes it, we make five ugly things before we get one pretty thing. Or if you're me, you make ten ugly things before you get a pretty thing. Or you try and pick up a hobby like painting, and you're just not good at it. And that's okay, too. We just keep at it. There's something to say for grit in this world, I tell you. Grit can make up where talent lacks in some cases. So, because I don't dirty the kitchen for a dozen cookies, I went and made a stinking ton of these happy little birds with their feather wing pointing in the right direction. So right now I just have it stored on some twine. <clears throat> and I want to show this to you. So all my little, this little plaid guy is so cute. And he has snowflake wings. And then I can reverse the pattern and do it here. Look at all this stuff. And so what I'm thinking is I'm going to hold this out on some twine. And I'm going to spread these apart. Right? I might have to use a dollop of hot glue right underneath this ribbon right here to keep it in place. And then I'm going to take some really um, neat Christmas ribbon, like maybe three quarter of an inch ribbon, and I'm going to stick it in between here and just tie it around. Right? I'm just going to tie it and let it hang down. So I kind of tested with that a little bit. So this is one of my works in progress or unfinished objects, my UFOs, that I'm going to work on. And then I'm going to hang it, I believe, by the fireplace. Um, probably not the best idea since it's paper, but uh, we don't really use our fireplace very much. So that's my plan with that. So haha -ha to my hubby, I got my cricket up. There. <laughs> I win. Of course, you guys know I love English paper piecing, so I've been posting on Instagram about that. I've been taking my grandmother flower um, hexagons, and this is in laundry basket quilt fabrics, and I have been learning to add diamonds to the side. Now, in my other videos, you can see I have just English or needle turn applique these onto a seven inch square of fabric, but with these, I wanted to be able to join them together. So the idea is kind of like this, right? What I love about this, and I love this part about quilting all together, is that when you start to put your blocks together, you get secondary and sometimes tertiary shapes. So this one, for instance, is going to create this 3D, I hope you can see it, it's going to create this 3D square that's in between these three hexagons and it's going to repeat every time it goes through. So this is kind of one of those slow stitching projects that I'm just working on and I am loving it. Look at those fabrics! And when you're doing grandmother's flowers you can do them you know out of scraps traditionally that was the idea. This one's missing his his bottom triangle. I'm working on him. But I love working on these things when I am sitting there watching my Hallmark Christmas movies which in case you didn't know are already out. And what I love about these uh, blocks, hexagons particularly, is that I used a fusible hexagon shape. So these are one inch hexagons and they're fusible. So you fuse them to the wrong side of the fabric, wrap the fabric around, stitch them together, and then it will dissolve when it gets washed. And you'll basically have just this little thin piece of stabilizer that's left in there. And that makes me happy, probably makes all of us happy in the EPP world because we don't have to pull papers. When I say pull papers, I mean you're turning this bad guy around, you're picking out your quarter inch seams that have been glued down, and you're ripping out those papers. Not a fun process. But the slow stitching that you get from this, it's, it's totally relaxing and and I love it, and it's one of my favorite things. Okay, another way to, I was thinking about doing that is just to kind of sew them together like this with one um, diamond in the middle. So I'm gonna do something with this. I think I'm gonna put it as the top of a Christmas gift bag. So when I do that, I'm just gonna lay it onto the fabric like this, and then I'm gonna cut a straight line right here at the top of these hexagons, so I'm only gonna get a half hexy right here. And this is gonna be the top of a gift bag. That's what I'm thinking right now. Of course, plans can change. If I do something smash bang up awesome with it, I will be sure to show you. 
but I'm a sucker for these um, reproduction prints. They just, they make me happy. And I don't have to devote as much time to it because I'm able to leave those papers in. Okay, cross stitch projects. I don't think I got very far on this quilt shop. This is on a 14 inch. Oh, there, my husband just announced dinner time over Alexa. <laughs> Um, but I'm really looking forward to finishing this one. This should be finished by Christmas. Um, I'm using a 14 count two over two. Uh, this has this little iridescent uh, string to it, so that's really fun. But I haven't really been focusing on that because I wanted to finish my Autumn's Wish. So that this Autumn's Wish, I am going to frame and I'm going to put as a centerpiece on the dinner table for Thanksgiving. That's my plan with that one. So I just want to go and find myself a nice whitewashed frame that's big enough. Hobby Lobby will probably be where I have to go. Okay, then a start this week. I purchased on Etsy this pack of patterns, 50 Christmas ornaments, probably from the 50s or 60s. And this is going to be a half crescent Santa. I love these half crescent Santas. They make me so happy. So look at this little cuteness. I'm doing this on an 18 count um, white with some, it has some marbling to it. And, and I like that. And I did it on the right side this time. So thank you. I know, I'm very proud of myself. So I'm working on him. He kind of looks a little creepy without his eyeball in right now. Um, so <laughs> I had stopped stitching his beard. I just held that and I was like, Kayla, when you pick this up again, friend, you're going to have to put his eyeball in. So it's kind of scary. Um, and I just keep him in a little envelope because these are just small ornament uh, cross stitches. Then another start that I had this week, I had quite a few starts, but that's okay. It's not a big deal is one of my YouTube um, subscribers, the Lacey Stitcher, had sent me a pattern like this. And I won't hold it up long, but essentially um, it spells out Christmas and it spells it in blocks. And it was paired with something, it was paired with a, a piece of linen and some DMC floss. And I liked it, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. But I really wanted to do it because it looked like it was going to be, you know, just a couple of day project and I was going to be able to knock this cross stitch project out. So I started it. I chose my own um, f uh, floss, of course. I went with Weeks Dye Works because I absolutely love Weeks Dye Works. It's, just, it's my favorite embroidery floss. So I used that. And this is my progress so far. Look at this. And I chose to put it on this banner piece of cross stitch fabric. Look at how great that is. And this is a 28 count. Now what I'm going to do with this and why I chose this piece is, and it, yeah, it's not centered and, and I know that. Um, I just kind of start where I feel like it, to be honest with you. And then I start stitching. I'm not using a magnifying glass or any type of apparatus like that. I'm just kind of doing this 28 count as best I can. What I love about this is it feels like braille. It looks like embroidery, but those are actual cross stitch. I mean, now maybe the lacy stitcher knows that this is how fantastic this is going to turn out, but I didn't know. And I am loving this. This right here was about six hours of stitching. Six. Um, but it's going to be really amazing because what I'm going to do with it, and this is, my head's always in the clouds, y'all know this, is I'm going to cut it down the side and I'm going to roll it in right down here and I'm going to use it as a ribbon that's going to hang off of a wreath. I have to build the wreath yet, but that's no big deal. First things first. So this is going to spell Christmas and it's going to be blocked like this. The pattern is called Charmed Mini Block Christmas um, and it is by Heinzeit, H-I-N-Z-E-I-T. And they look like they're out of Garden City, Michigan. So I am really excited about this. If you buy something in a kit and you don't like one of the colors or you buy something in a kit but you don't know what you're going to do with it, I encourage you to just start stitching it anyway. It'll come to you. So that's one of my works. I am really, really, really loving that. Another start that I had this week was, let's see what this guy's called. Oh, it's the Your State Holiday Home. 
And so this reads our Virginia holiday home. I'm reading it to you, not because you can't read, but because it's probably backwards. <laughs> And it has a little Santa there, and I love this little terracotta pot. I mean, this is really fun. So let me show you my progress on that. This has been my start this week, and um, I got a little story for this one. This is me right here. So I believe this is a 14 count. It's an antique blue. I purchased just this linen here at Hobby Lobby. Nothing fancy. I did not use the called for colors. You're surprised, I know. And while it looks a little pink here, it's actually an orange and this color that's in here that weaves. But look at the little embroidery stitches that I get to do on there. Isn't that fun? That is so fun. And the little reindeer, who's going to love him? I love it. And since he's not a sheep, I didn't have to make him black. I could actually make him a brown reindeer. Here's our snow. Here's Santa's sleigh. Santa's going to sit in there and then it's going to say our holiday home here. But I really wanted to do this one. I'm hoping we don't move, but we're still active duty. But I wanted to, active duty army, but I wanted to do this one because I wanted to include Washington State. Last year was our third Christmas in the same house. And you're like, oh, that's a big deal. But for us, it really, it really, really is. We have never in our entire army career and marriage been able to have three consecutive Christmases in the same house and so I'm really really excited about that I loved it this is going to be year four what and um, I wanted to use this as a commemorative way to remember that in Washington while we were stationed here we were able to stay here for such a long time that we were able to get four Christmases God willing in this house and that's going to be amazing so do you guys love it this is actually a pretty quick make, um, probably because I'm doing it on 14, but it's not a very big pattern. I'm doing two over two, and it comes with a little um, brass looking bird uh, that just goes on there like a little charm. I always love those. I think that's the extra mile. Okay, let me talk quickly about just this one pattern that was my haul. I purchased from Little Fox Stitching, the Christmas Gingerbread Village. Now, I know that this is a little um, less appealing than it should be because I didn't print it in color, but I'm going to make it color. And so I really didn't see the need. If <laughs> you traditionally use the called for thread colors and floss colors, then you might want to print it in color, but I do not. So it just doesn't bother me. Um, I don't need anything to reference. I just kind of roll with it. And look at all the detail in there. Look at the size of that. That's going to be amazing. So this was an Etsy purchase. It's downloadable, so PDF. I love that. Instant gratification for shopping. That's what we do nowadays. So I'm not sure if I'm going to start this one this year. Um, but if you're doing it too, would you let me know? That would be awesome. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is my oops. <clears throat> so at the quilt shop, I get to choose from certain fabrics and come up with different ideas and things that I want to do for um, for display in the quilt shop. It's actually like one of my favorite parts of working there. My most favorite part probably is the people and then also the opportunity to get to teach um, non-quilters how to quilt, right? To get them excited about it because <laughs> once you're on board, it's all downhill from there. It's like once you make that first quilt, your hook, line, and sinker, you're ready to rock and roll, right? Um, so those are my favorite parts. But I also get to choose um, from different projects and petition ideas, and then I get to make the samples of those. And um, that's just really fun for me. So there was this alphabet panel. I'm not sure if I actually have it. Um, and it was really just made to be a panel quilt. So one long rectangular or square piece in the center that you traditionally just border. You can do flying geese or something fancy, or you can just border it with strips of fabric. And it's a really quick way to make a quilt. So if you're looking for a quick, easy quilt this um, to gift by Christmas, a panel quilt's gonna be a great way to go. But Riley Blake had this fabric line. So I thought, since it has the full alphabet in there, why don't we turn them into pillows or table runners or something? To make a long story short, I convinced another quilter at the store that she's going to do a joy table um, wall hanging or table topper. It's going to spell J-O-Y because it's, you get the alphabet in the panel, but you only get one of each letter. And so I really had to think here. And then I was going to do a Noel. 
So here's my Noel I want to show you. Look at this. And I took a ton of time to do this. I put um, a nine patch in the corner of each one on each side here, just on the corners, right? And I mean, it wasn't, I shouldn't say like it was days and days, right? Because it is a panel quilt, so it comes together very easily. But my cornerstone was cut a quarter of an inch too big because I'm, I very seldom work with patterns. And so sometimes I run into those unnecessary frustrations. And there's my Noel. <clears throat> so I bring it to the quilt shop the next day. And I'm like showing a coworker, hey, I'm frustrated. My, you know, cornerstone is a quarter of an inch too big to match my sashing, so it doesn't line up. I don't really like it, but I'm wondering if we just quilt it to death, if it'll even be noticeable. And she's like, oh, I wouldn't worry about that. And then she asks me about my letter O. She says, Kayla, is the Noel O a fancy O or is it the letter Q? And folks, I'm sorry to say, I went straight to that bolt of fabric. I pulled it out. I opened that whole alphabet and I did not cut the O. I cut the Q. So, <laughs> so want to know what N-Q-E-L spells? Nothing. <laughs> so I think I'm going to hang on to this. Um, the, that My poor coworker was trying to console me. She says, Kayla, you can just use it for your daughter. It could be a doll quilt. You know, you could... I could probably put something, you know, like a, a floral centerpiece or something over the queue um, and nobody would know. My teenage boys had a riot with this. They were coming up with all sorts of acronyms and things, but lucky for them or lucky for me, Q's a hard number. <laughs> anyway, that's my laugh for you. That's where we're at. <clears throat> so I am not going to use that for my daughter. I am not going to do anything with it. I am not posting it on Instagram. I'm not telling my friends and family. I'm sharing it here with you fellow crafters and quilters. And then it is going in the timeout pile, probably never to be touched again. But I'm going to hang on to it because this is just another example. Not everything turns out. And that is okay. We just keep at it, right? It's like when you have a bad parenting day or a bad day at work or whatever. It, it You can't call the game on a counter rain, right? Like... I can laugh about it now. I wanted to cry big crocodile tears when she pointed it out to me that my fancy O is actually the letter Q. Um, but I'm not going to cry big crocodile tears over it. It's, that's just the way that it is. <clears throat> okay, last two things I want to show you. I um, am learning how to long arm quilt. And I'm loving it. I had my first lesson today. The quilt shop has this 12 foot Innovo master machine, right? Um, that I'm horrendously afraid that I'm going to break, but I'm not going to. So I got to put, you know, one of my old quilt tops and actually get it quilted. Now, I've never had a quilt long armed before. I usually can't afford it. I remember, you know, 10, 12 years ago sitting down at my computer watching Jenny from Missouri Star Quilt Company teach me how to quilt on a machine that I was making payments on using fabric that I couldn't afford. I mean, so it's so long arm quilting um, is definitely worth the money, but it is very expensive and it's an additional hundred hundred plus dollars for each quilt that I make. Well, since quilting is my therapy, um, in addition to the wine right now, <laughs> um, I am really cranking out. I have cranked out a lot of quilt tops. You know, some, I remember 2018, I think it was, or 2019, I had made, I think, seven quilt tops by April. And so you can imagine that's just a lot of money. So anyway, I went into my closet where I hang up my quilt, um, tops and I pulled out an older one that I had made quite a few years ago and I want to show this to you. So it wasn't very big so I just put a border on it. You know that's how we fix quilts. But basically this is just um, sort of a herringbone style quilt. But I bought this fabric when I bought it um, 10 years ago because these little girls remind me of the Campbell Soup um, people. And so I loved it. It just makes a giant X block, as you can see here. I put a white border on it. <clears throat> There's three different fabrics. 
This is probably a two yard quilt. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to it. It looks a lot bigger on me just because I'm little, but um, it really isn't that big. And so this is one of them that's just waiting to go on the long arm machine. I'm really excited about that. I have a Moda quilt on there right now um, that will be finished and I will be sure to show you guys that one when I get it home this weekend. All right, my last project, I'm not gonna go into any haul today because um, this was the only cross stitch pattern that I had purchased and all my fabric haul is um, always a lot. So we are not gonna go there. But I wanted to show you this applique project that I got myself into. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a Riley Blake. Let me take the pin out because it doesn't even fold right. This is just a half a yard of Riley Blake. And you can see it has some like red cardinals. It has a wintry feel to it. It has this nice blue on it. And what I loved about this, even though I typically do traditional colors for Christmas, your reds and your greens, silvers and golds, that this was kind of like a shiny gray, a really light pale blue. I hope you can see that. Some red berries and these cardinals. So I wanted to take that same shape that I had cut on my excuse me, cut on my Cricut and um, put it onto some fabric. And so I picked up some coordinating fat quarters out of the same line and my tails are going in the right direction, not my tails, my feathers. Isn't that lovely? And I'm working on, I'm working on doing a needle turn applique. It's proving to be very difficult. There's my work so far. I'm using like a goldish yellow thread because I do want you to be able to see it even though traditionally um, needle turn applique you want the thread to be as invisible as possible so it looks like it's just the bird is just gonna sit on there um, but Lori Holt does a lot of needle turn applique um, and so I'm working on this project it's a little frustrating right now not sure um, when I'm gonna pick it up again um, but this is this is just a nice slow stitching therapy and I feel like it needs something. This is gonna be a table runner. Like I said, it's just a, a half a yard. But I'm thinking it needs something. They, there might need to be like holly um, branches or leaves or something that I'm going to attach to these birds. So those are many of the things that I've been working on. Um, I've been making a ton of fabric wrapped ornaments. I've been um, making candy cane fabric wrapped ornaments to go on the tree. I'm, you know, pulling out all the stops here because we're doing this big Christmas reveal at the quilt shop this weekend and it's, it really is going to be the place to be and I'm so super excited for that. So um, thank you all for watching. I can't wait um, to show you my quilted long arm. I can't wait to see what you guys are all doing. Be sure to comment and like and share with a friend. We're all working together in this um, crazy Christmas crafting season, um, and I'm really excited about the emphasis this year and, and probably last year, too, on the DIYing of the Christmas. I think handmade is best made, and so I often use that hashtag on Instagram. I thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time for Floss Tube Wannabe.